TWN podcast. My next tea with a segment that I call the Cedric. Uh, Mike, um, do you want to know why I call this the Cedric? I'm I'm totally unaware of why you call it the Cedric, but I'd love to know. Um, hey, do you have an idea of why I would call? Um, I would understand why you would call it the Cedric. It can also be referred to as the person in the Mae Young Classic that I can't think of. Mia, also known as the Mia Yim. <laughs> but we'll talk about Mia Yim later. Yes. Uh, so. Segway. Uh, Cedric Alexander. Uh, segway. Segway. Um, right. Uh, this is, of course, about the former Rockstar Spud. And we'll talk about that pretty amazing promo that he made from the very start. Um, Mike, what did you what did you think of uh, this? He had to say. Um, I think it was very much what you were expecting him to say in this moment, but I was I was a little bit surprised that he didn't really he he didn't show anything as if like he was potentially losing his job. Well, kind of had, but you know he didn't make it. He made it all about the title and not about keeping his job, which I thought was a little bit weird. And obviously, all about cookies in catering. Like, um, I don't know, like, he did um, suggest that there was nothing to lose. And, once again, that, you know, WWE haven't done this in this storyline at all. But, uh, you know, they added a little bit of element of, um, a little bit of reality that has leaked out into the outside world that they added back into the camera when he referred to into the camera, didn't he? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, yeah, this whole thing just leaves, I know we're going to get to kind of the, the, the matter at hand, but the whole thing just leaves a bit of a bad taste in your mouth. Like I know that Leo Rush has um, has come out and spoken about it, and he's not particularly happy with this. And obviously, the rumours going around that they're taking the old um, uh, what's it, uh, Hubert Farnsworth method of severely reduced pay for all um, by bringing these people back. But it's just I like. It's one of two things. You either take the positive or the negative on this one. And either, which is the positive on this, he got released and the guy has managed to earn his job back um, by never giving up and, and never surrendering an American dream and all that stuff. Or the negative is WWE used real life firings to create a narrative for a cruiserweight tournament. Um, I I would love it to be the first one. It more than likely is the second one. And if it is the second one, this whole thing is just a little bit icky. Oh, um, the second one is what Collar you Collar Hugh, shout out to Tom Collar Hugh. Um, actually, um, as called from his source, uh, Triple H has played up the fact that um, that it's more the first one in terms of taken. Yeah. To the conference. It's the, that um, conference call was just. Yeah, it's it's that key thing, of, it's like to give it a weird parallel with a storyline. It's very much looking at the the whole like Daniel Bryan thing, like um, the Yes movement. They're going to keep saying that this was the plan all along, and they are going to hammer home that it was the plan all along that he got fired, but then he's earned his his contract back. But part of me wonders whether he's been under contract the whole time or they or they gave him the old diggy of we're releasing you but we're gonna bring you're the first one we're gonna bring back so you're you're not out of a job necessarily um would you like I mean, like if, if, if they told him that then that's a lie too because true gulak yeah i it, 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 all of this yeah is, but gulak was the contract expiring yeah but all of this is is just a is is, is a big mess i love drake i love him he's he's fantastic I'm a big, big fan of his, but all of this just leaves uh, a very bad taste in your mouth. And also, the end result was really obvious. Um, yeah. yeah, getting to the match itself, I thought it was interesting that um, El Hijo del, del Fantasma. So yes. I was going by. I'm probably yeah. wrong. Yes. They made Fantasma here in my notes. Um, uh, like, I found it interesting that. Um, it was pointed out to me that everyone did this in the tournament because Drake Maverick is such a baby face, but I feel like he did it more than most. He did it way better. He played a very, very cocky heel. Phantasma's a, a yeah. like, yeah, Phantasma, did he play, Mike, you'd know, 
he was he primary. It was primarily Hill and Lucha Underground, wasn't he? I'm not sure about Triple A, but yeah, yeah. Um, Triple A, the bulk of his run he was a heel, um, but he was he was a massive face towards the end of his run there before he lost his mask. So, like, he's got both sides of it, but naturally he just he's just a better heel. He is, yeah. Anyway. And like I said, all of this stuff, WWE writing, incredibly predict- predictable um, storytelling. To borrow a vintage catchphrase from our esteemed host Joe here, Kel Surprise! <laughs> WWE. Surprise. Um, with WWE doing a really predictable storyline with a really predictable outcome. Sometimes the right outcome is the correct one. Um, but you kind of need to paint some twists and turns along the way. We know what's going to happen. We know that Phantasma is going to win. We know Phantasma is going to turn heel. And those two men in masks are going to turn out to randomly be Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wilde or something. Um, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> like, they kidnapped themselves. George and, George and Victoria, earlier, they were like, we don't know. Or, I I like, it could be anyone under there. I was like, what are you guys doing? Yeah, it's... For, for, for <laughs> are you working in the project? Yeah, full disclosure, and we love George, um, George and Victoria. They recorded a podcast before this with Joe, uh, but we kind of. Touched I know I've mentioned it in the intro. I know you mentioned the intro, but I uh, but, but, but you but, but you obviously mentioned it in a in a witty kind of um in a in a in a witty throwaway line as you do with your excellent intros on your on your show. But I just wanted to give full disclosure because you know me, I just want to hammer at home. <laughs> Cannot be subtle at all. Uh, yeah. So this is the second go around. So if there are any references to George and Victoria, that is it is on the lost tapes, the lo- the lost tapes of the Wednesday Night War, the forgotten episode. Um, yeah, like <laughs> it's the last one, the forgotten episode of the last one. I'm absolutely gutted. You can't, you don't actually don't understand. I know, I know, I, you, I, I know you're let down by having us two here, but we'll we'll, we'll persevere regardless. Don't worry. Okay. It's like the last Lucha Forever show in Cardiff. It never exists anymore because it was never recorded. <laughs> Solid Lucha Forever reference. Anyway, yeah, it's this is all just really predictable, and it doesn't really give like the only positive out of it is just how good Drake Maverick is. But we knew that already. So, uh, how long has he been employed at WWE? Is it three years now? Am I right in thinking that? Or is it, it was two? just before. It was just before WrestleMania 34, so two years. Just two years. O- so just over two years. In two years. It's taken them two years for them to find a point to actually use him as a wrestler. And they only use him as a wrestler after they release him. Yeah. That that sums yeah. up a lot, doesn't it, to be fair? Like, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much... Yeah, that's the WWE. Um, was it a wise man wanted? Uh, billi- a, a millionaire who should be a billionaire? Yeah. Um, and, he, and he continues to make money yeah. to spite himself. Um, old old centimeter punk Charles oh. Montgomery. True words have never been spoken. Okay. Right, let's move on from the Cedric, and let's move on move on from the Cedric to the Teddy. Like, why would I have called this next segment the Teddy? Holla holla um, holla! <laughs> I was thinking it was going to be a reference to sort of like moon salts and <laughs> bad decisions. <laughs> that is going to be the, that is going to be named with that certain person's TV movie, isn't it? Moon Salt and Bad Decisions. <laughs> the Teddy So and So no, story. No mention, of, no mention of people trafficking. Well, you have to give the people a little bit of intrigue, and I'm going to add there allegedly. <laughs> I don't, th- I don't think that court case went through yet, so I'm going to say allegedly. Is this the reason why you couldn't use that promo from earlier this? <laughs> anyway, um... <laughs> oh yes, Smiley's practically begged me about fourteen times for you to send her that promo. She wants to see it. I know that, that's something that's God. on off pod that should be shouldn't be on pod. But yeah, please send her that promo yeah. about um a certain yeah. person she'll remain nameless. Anyway, let's talk about tag oh, teams. Oh, the worst person in. Hey, open this week of we, this week's episode of NXT with Mia Yim versus Candice LeRae, which is like honestly. Levels. be a great match yeah quality 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 fun for all the family in um, however yeah how do you think the match went until the end matthew or um the big can- 
uh, yeah, I am. I am a. I am a big fan of of Candice. I'm not the biggest fan of Candice that we all know. Uh, shout out to Lawson, who is like the number one Candice LeRae fan on the planet. Um, oh, that's true. Uh, first of all, I want to give um, a lot of love to Candice LeRae's facial expressions. She has really lent into being a heel incredibly well. Um, she's going into more of. She's not going for that vicious heel thing. She's really lent in if for a comparison. Um, and she doesn't need any more credit because she gives us credit all the time. She's really lent into that OG Stephanie McMahon kind of spoiled brat vernacular yeah. alongside alongside Johnny Gargano. Sort of. Yeah, it's it's great, and I'm a big fan. And these guys were really really good. And then obviously it all went to um, all went to hell with all of them. Do um, everyone getting involved? Uh, like, uh, the entire mid card of the NXT Women's Division just descending. I you know what and credit to um nxt being the only a, a brand with a actual definable card yeah that's fair <laughs> enough card sorry like that would like they've they've yeah. got upper echelon and then a solid foundation underneath them and then they've got the lower underneath that so they actually they have got definition to their roster for the women and, and then they've got Aaliyah. sorry <laughs> Yeah, well, well they, they've got to have somebody to take the tickets. Yeah, not every uh, someone's got to be. Some, Where the fans come back anyway. So, someone's got to be. Uh, not everyone can do what they want. Someone's got to be the ditch digger, and that person is a Leah in, in this case. But um, <laughs> get to a Leah in a bit. Um, <laughs> in the bin, and then about, into the um, not, um, not only did the rest of the women's mid card come out, but spouses come out as well. Get spouses. <laughs> spouses. This turns all Maury Povich up in this like, mother. Keith Lee. Oh yes, Keith Lee in those pink shoes was a right vibe. It was. It's, a, was it's a look. Johnny Gar Johnny Gar Johnny Gargano looks like the kind of guy who hangs out outside a prom and waits for a crying girl to run past. <laughs> he yeah. No, yeah he knows he's dressed like you know um like a hug fiend. Whenever he see anyone going, hey, where's my hug? He looks like one of those guys. Um, with his with his baby <laughs> like, with, his, with, with his didn't Beth thing that's called him with his baby gap jeans, which is like the like just a next level insult. <laughs> like um, no, I originally said that Johnny Gargano looks like he's still up. But... You have to reload that joke because you you cut out there, Joe. Yeah. I, I originally like the original joke that I said is that Johnny Gargano looks like he sells drugs to kids. <laughs> <laughs> he does have yeah, a, he's got like it, like yeah. the way he's dressed he's dressed like a wrong un. like it that, but it works um also dressed like i can't say that yeah <laughs> remember if if, Sorry, you, can't, you, can't, <laughs> if you if you speak if you speak you get in tr- you will get in trouble <laughs> uh, uh, that promo is coming to your soon smart um but the highlight uh i think of this was keith lee walking while carrying Johnny Gargano back to the ring and not realising until legitimately, I want to say, 30 seconds into a mixed tag match being announced um, that Candice LeRae was on his back. <laughs> Which was great. Because Candice LeRae was putting... She was like... Kind of let, her go, let, her, let her down said, so get to your corner. <laughs> it, was just, it was just brilliant. It was just, generally, it was just like, got to the way and then just looked round and was like... What? You're, why are you there? Like, go. You ran there. How, how long have you been there? What are <laughs> my, you even doing? My, yeah, <laughs> my fiance needs to beat you up. Go round the other corner. Um, but yeah, we got a decent. It was all of this that makes me. Uh, it was all of this that just makes me miss. It's. It was. I. I enjoyed all of this. It was all good. And then it's leaning towards. Um, Two match. Well, they, they announced the six-woman tag, which is something I didn't expect, and I'm actually very excited for that match at Takeover. That should yeah. be player, 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 player. player. Te- somewhere Teddy Long is losing his <laughs> shit. Um, holla, holla, holla. <laughs> for, the, for the for the audio listeners, they're not going to realise, but me and Joe did a simultaneous Teddy Long dance. Um, and then we've got the what seems to be the North American title match between Gargano and Keith Lee. Why does Gargano only ever go for the North American title when he's a heel. <laughs> the first time he um, won it, he was a bad guy. He was against Ricochet. <laughs> yeah. Um, because he's a corny, because he's the corniest motherfucker. Yeah, he is. Um, um, yeah, um. Also, he went for the uh, WWE heel trifecta of raking the eyes, 
attacking a body part before a pay per view and stealing um, the belt. He yeah, he did. He went for the full hat trick, like the perfect. That was that. That is the both feet and the header of heel shit housery. Which you love, oh, but like I love the fact those heels will pick one thing to do over the course of a feud. He did all three in five minutes. <laughs> Not particularly well. That's that's the bet. That's because he's a great heel. <laughs> he is a like you. You. you <laughs> I love been... how he just didn't. Go on, Mike. I was just gonna say I love how he just didn't care. Like he's just laid in the ring, and it's just like, oh, I got my car keys. I was expecting Maggie to come in and be like, got your wallet, <laughs> got your keys, got your wallet. <laughs> yeah, I like he did. <laughs> I love it because also like you can imagine the car that Gargano's got is not a cool car. It's gonna be like a no, no, no. It's gonna be a like Toyota Corolla or something. Yeah, like that. it's gonna be like a Ford Galaxy. I feel like Gargano's definitely a Ford Galaxy driver. Um, no, nah, Ford like, Fiesta. Uh, it definitely matches his jacket. Yeah, oh yeah, it's it's it white. His... And I guarantee whatever yeah. whatever Sirius XM radio on it is like soft something. No, it's not. Um, it's just yeah. It's like whatever station is playing the most pop punk. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'll just say NPR, but actually no. Yeah, it's got something wrong with Pop Punk. Oh, he's probably he's probably um probably bumping the first two albums of Paramore. Yeah, before they got crap. That's that, yeah. that, that's a fair point. And yeah, there's nothing wrong with Pop Punk. It's just some people that choose to listen to it. Gargano's bringing the um bringing the scene down with his with his oh. car key stabbing shenanigans. Well, I don't know. Like he's he dresses the part. Let's move on. Um, there's other stuff going on here. Uh, in NXT, a lot. Um, obviously, it's building up to the pay per view um, on Sunday. Sunday, yeah, it's on Sunday. It's on Sunday. I, I Sunday. like. I missed the days when take over on Saturday. Yeah, those, I, f- those I those forgot. Nice. La- I forgot last week and got my hopes up when it was on a Saturday. Um, but it's on a Sunday. It's fine. We'll we'll we'll, we'll live. I'm sure. Um, uh, yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna talk much about time matches because we'll probably do this for Sunday. Monday, yes, Monday we'll do this. Yes, well, we will discuss this over the weekend. I imagine there'll be some Fire Pro related nonsense over this weekend before we watch the show and yeah. and discuss it. So exactly. So I'll leave it for that. Um, however, what I will cover is that Breezing Bre- Ah words Zango are not only back, but they are number one contenders after beating Disputed Era and the Brown Brothers. Way. Can we just discuss the? general aesthetic of Imperium facing Breezango. It's incredible, but I feel like if there was ever a time for Oni Lorcan to discover only how to tweet in all caps, but in bold as well, it would be now. <laughs> because the story has been the last month are going to be Imperium. Yeah, and then they've gone, oh look, Fandango's well, back. You two, you're going over because it'll be really funny to see but then again, like it's probably actually going to be a low key decent match between Imperium and Breezango. Oh, of course it will. Because what they're doing at the moment is they're doing the whole. Um, they have the most ridiculous shenanigan entrances of all time, but when they get in the ring, they're all business. We're not getting really any comedy matches between Breeze and like Breeze and Fandango. They're they're very much all action in the ring. So, I I just really love the entrance. It just genuinely amused me. Of it was beautiful. I, I mean, I had to, I had to check that they weren't feds anymore before I could give them cosign. But... They've not been they've not been feds for a while. They've been, uh, but like especially now, I just had to. Yeah, they've, they've, they're they're retirement. Yeah, they 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 they, they left the force because of um, injustice, and they've been construction workers. They've gone through the full gambit of the village people, and now they and now they've moved moved on. So, Wait, I... when were they in the navy? I, I'm fairly certain they've done the navy. Uh, they've probably done the navy. They definitely, they definitely, they definitely did the navy. Yeah, uh, I can see it now. I can see. I can see Fandango in the white flares <laughs> and the stripy top. It's stressful. <laughs> it's it's a, it's a powerful image. Um, but not the powers you want. In related news to this tag match, uh, Dexter Loomis can draw now. <laughs> yeah. In what way that, do you mean that? Do that, you mean that, that in, was interesting. Do you mean that in the artistic sense or the wrestling well, no, sense? No, we can't. No. <laughs> Um, the artistic sense for sure. <laughs> oh, do you want me to play the part of yeah. George on this? When you talk about Dexter oh. Lunis, where I just rip 
the shit out of him. Like, I love, I love him so much. <laughs> TNA, Gunner, even though it's not okay anymore. Um, <laughs> there you go. I just hi George. That that that's you when you t- that's what you sound like when you talk about Dexter Loomis. So, um, uh, yeah. My, um, he was you was doing that and he was doing that earlier, and in the middle of it, I just asked him what the safe word would be, and he said Roderick Strong. Actually, no, that would make him go harder. <laughs> yeah, it'd be Christy Hemi. He'd get flashbacks, like a flashback. Um, this is like a dream. Are you all right, um, by the way, Joe? Because again, I know this is for video only, but I'll explain it. Halfway through us talking, the light has just gone out in your in in the room you're recording. <laughs> Ah, don't worry about it, it's fine. <laughs> and I, I feel like you're cutting a promo after you've been kidnapped by ninjas like Samoa Joe in TNA. <laughs> oh, God, don't remind me. <laughs> don't worry, it'll be forgotten next week. Oh, uh, fair enough. Okay, and uh, we're going to end NXT by uh, talking about my favourite, um, one of my favourite things. Uh, that's right, Cody Neath and Robert Stone's Night was brought to you by the letter L. <laughs> nice why why is jack gallagher now with tony like jack gallagher just just is going around every person in 205 live like i i generally think he's going he like he goes home at night looks at a photo of, of only lorkin and danny birch and goes one day i'll find my cruiserweight tag team partner and just he's fight literally going to anyone's like can you please team with me i want to find love the same way only and danny birch have he's doing like the nxt equivalent of tinder yeah, this is it. He's going through everyone possible and hoping he gets a match. Tinder 05 Live. He looked at the, looked at the Zoe trade and he said, I want that for me. <laughs> what would the Gallagher version of the of the Zoe train be called? Um, thing to do with a ship because of that god awful tattoo. Uh, the. Oh. Stena Line. Piano Ferry. <laughs> 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 the, 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 the QE3. The, um, there we go. Yeah, the QE3 is the name of Jack Gallagher's stable. Oh, jeez. Um, do we want to talk about Rob? <laughs> Just how many elves he took in the space of about 15 minutes? I did love um, Tom Phillips' line about Robert Stone, where when he came out, he said he looked like Ari Gold after a bender. Did pop me massively. <laughs> for the old entourage yeah. reference. Very true, though. Um, yeah, like, I like this. Robert Stone, Robert Stone got sacked by Chelsea Green and came out, like you said, looking like Ari Gold after a bender. Um, I just thought, like, he looked that he looked like a disheveled um, Izzy brother, but you know what? Let's let's move on. He, um, he also, he, he did, uh, literally, he, he's on the verge of, he's on the verge of cutting that Ian Beale promo. It's true because, like, he, it was only one person who could save him from this rut. And who was that, Mike? Who was it? He just don't, <laughs> Mike genuinely it. doesn't know. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, wow. Cause, cause it that, was yeah, because that's the cr- also the correct answer. Because they're, they're, I don't know, and Aaliyah are one and the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he tried to save her and didn't really do a good job. Yeah, so, he cost. Like, are they. Does that make them perfect for each other? He, he gave he gave her the yeah. I don't don't call me we'll call you speech and then lost Chelsea Green and came in and then shagged a ting to um, try and get her having to lose to Santana Garrett. So now, like, so he's trying to settle with his side. He still has jobber music. Yeah, it's it's just like who's he going to end up with? Who's lower than Leah on the on the NXT food chain? Is there is there anyone? That's the key question. There's got to be somebody who's signed in the last, like, two weeks. Caden. Caden. Caden Carter. That's not fair. <laughs> She's good. She does TikToks. Any, of the, any one of the random women in the crowd will go with. Yeah. <laughs> Is that going to be next week? It's Robert Stone <laughs> just going through the crowd begging someone to sign a deal with him. Yeah. Uh, he should have gone into tag teams. Out to Malcolm. 